And so um, I came to the Senate in, a, in, a, in an unusual way. Uh, I'm the 21st American in the history of our country since 1789, then went straight from being a mayor to being a United States Senator. Um, but more than that, I got elected in a special election, uh, which meant that um, I was a mayor and then in the blink of an eye, uh, the next day I was being sworn into the United States Senate. During those last days of being a mayor of a big city in America, I was struggling with the issues uh, of, uh, of, 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 of grievous challenge uh, from murders, uh, and crime uh, to poverty. Uh, I have a city with a, a stunning rate of child poverty um, and wrestling with all of these issues. I get to the United States Senate and for me it was a blessing because so much of the tools that we as mayors have, and I wanna recognize that you have an extraordinary mayor of great talent of this city. Uh, I'm incredibly impressed with him. I was impressed with him enough, then he lays on me that he's a fellow vegan uh, like I am, and <laughs> I, I felt this, this kinship. Uh, the only complaint I have, and forgive me for publicly criticizing a mayor in his own city, uh, but he has an appalling amount of hair on his head. <laughs> um, I, I agree with I, you. Thank you very much, yeah. Senator. <laughs> um, appalling amount. Uh, uh, it cuts down wind resistance, sir, when you can move a lot quicker <laughs> in service of your constituents if you would just shave it bald. Um, it's an efficiency thing. <laughs> um, but I, I went to the Senate uh, really uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a bit of anguish um, because the country that we all love, uh, I, I saw the, the carnage that was happening. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about the physical carnage, but in terms of people's potential, in terms of people's hope uh, that was happening because of our criminal justice system. As Senator Leahy said, the land of the free, the land of the free, has done something so stunning in human history uh, to incarcerate such a dramatic amount of its people. A people that believes in freedom have such a disproportionate amount of the, of the imprisoned people on the planet Earth. 5% uh, uh, of the globe's population, one out of every four people uh, on the planet Earth uh, that is imprisoned are in the United States of America. And, and what's worse than that is if you really look down at the data of who we imprison, um, we know that we are painfully moving away from our values. As one of my other heroes, uh, one sitting here, one is a man named Brian Stevenson, says that we are a nation uh, that treats you better if you are rich and guilty than poor and innocent. And, and so if you look at the people we imprison, uh, I have a state that has the Liber Statue of Liberty's back, and I love to go to Liberty Park, see the, see the, the, the great woman in the harbor, and if you read that inscription, it's, it's such powerful poetry. Uh, give me your tired, your hungry, uh, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore, uh, the poor, the, the, the tempest tossed. It's almost as if at the end of that list of the people that are being described, you could now slap at the end of that, give me these people because it's exactly who I'm going to put in prison in this country. Because our prison population is overwhelmingly poor, 75% uh, uh, qualify for indigent uh, representation. It is overwhelmingly addicted, um, uh, dramatic amounts of, of, of addiction. It is overwhelmingly uh, mentally ill um, and victims of trauma and sexual abuse. Uh, and it is overwhelmingly, uh, uh, disproportionately I should say, minority. Um, we live in a nation right now uh, that we do not uh, in fact, I love Senator walking, when we finished caucus, I purposely walk down the steps of the Capitol because I get to stare at the Supreme Court building and I look at those words and they, they sear my heart at times because they mock me. We say that we are a nation of equal justice under law and that's just not the reality when we know we have big data now, we can do the numbers, but there's absolutely no difference between blacks and whites and Latinos for, for drug crimes, no difference. In fact, young white men have a little bit higher rates of dealing drugs than young black and Latino men. But then if you look at who gets in prison for it, a Latino man is twice as likely to get uh, arrested for drug crimes than someone that's white. Uh, much more likely than anyone white, a Latino person is to get the mandatory minimum. African Americans are nearly four times as likely uh, to get uh, the, 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 the prison, uh, the, the, to be incarcerated for, for drug use. And it affects all of our states, even here in Vermont. I was talking uh, to, to uh, a gentleman uh, in the back and, and, and I mentioned to him the data point that even in this great state, uh, which is a great state, 
Uh, African Americans are only 1% of your state's population, but they make up about 11% of your prison population. And, and it's what's challenging to me is that this broken system, um, it, it is not about uh, justice, because what is the justice in a system that compounds the problems that feed crime in the first place? Think about this. We now know that if our incarceration rate was the same as our industrial peers, we would have 20% less poverty in America. That is, that is dramatic. We could cut poverty by a fifth. And why? Well, that's because people who come out of prison, we, we put them in a vice. We, we, we throw them into a caste system in which their economic potential is constricted, their ability to get a job is, 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 is severely constrained to get a loan from a bank, depending on what state you're in, to vote, to, to get food stamps, to get a Pell Grant. We put them in such a, a horrific caste system. In fact, in America, in the majority of our states, it is legal to discriminate against someone, deny them housing, a job, for not even being convicted. If you have an arrest record in America, it is legal to discriminate against that person in housing employment just for having uh, uh, that, that arrest record. And, and so what, what is difficult for me um, is, is to see a system that is causing so much of the problems that we talk about. Uh, I, I was mayor and I did an analysis of the murders in my city. And I found out that, that over about 84% of the murder victims, the victims, had been arrested before an average of 10 times. That many of the young men, when we started tracing their roots, we saw that they were getting caught up in a criminal justice system from early on. They weren't getting the support they need from drug treatment to mental health to dealing with their childhood trauma. They actually were ending up in situations in prison, like, like something that human rights organizations call torture, which is juvenile solitary confinement, not even when they were convicted of something, often when they were just waiting for their trial. And then those people would be spat back out into the, system, into the streets with very little support. And so I just want to wrap this up by saying that there is, a, there is a sense of urgency to deal with this issue, not just for the people that are being incarcerated, the lives that are being destroyed, the families that are being hampered, but for all of us. Senator Leahy and I uh, oversee federal budgets. And, and just in the Department of Corrections alone, it's grown so much that it's eating away, I talked to this about with, with Attorney General Holder, eating away our ability to spend on priorities that we all want it to be spent on, from counterterrorism to, 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 to dealing with uh, uh, issues uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that will make us all safer. More than this, it's, it's tr taking from our public treasure, not just to the limit that the, the extent that Senator Leahy was talking about, where we went from a nation with the best infrastructure in the globe to number 16, depending on the measure you look at, a nation that not simply uh, 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 is distinguished by the number of prisoners they have, but by the stunning ability to build that, that one area of infrastructure. But, but more than this, we're missing out on the genius of so many of these people, what they could be contributing. If that first accident, that first mistake, that first bad step, didn't result in a lifetime's worth of, 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 of punishment, of retribution, of problems. I'll, I'll end with this, because this is what Senator Leahy is to me. Um, the people on this panel inspire me because this is not something that we can't fix. When I talk to Senator Leahy about it, the one thing I love about him uh, is he has a perspective about us taking on difficult challenges and making a difference. His career speaks to that, from issues of landmines, uh, uh, fr uh, from issues uh, that affect urban places. He, he's a champion of hope. And so what I'm excited about is the innovators that are around me right now, uh, people that are beginning to show a way out of no way, uh, beginning to show that poverty doesn't have to be a, 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 a slippery slope into incarceration. People are showing that that there is compassion and mercy towards those who are ill or addicted. Uh, people are showing that common sense can rule in our country, that we can use our treasure and our resources to build America and not tear down people. 
So I'm grateful for this forum. I'm thankful for the, for the, for the man that's next to me. And for, to the rest of the panelists, uh, you all inspire me by the work that you're doing in this state. And there are lessons that you all are making, learning here that can benefit New Jersey as well. So I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you.